Hello again. Uh, this is my 14th day second video. This looks like a lot. Uh, well, I'm going to talk through it pretty fast, um, and you can always pause. This should go on uh, page 1.1, 1 .1, or else go on to the back when you want Shakespearean plays. Frank's recommended order of Shakespearean experience. Notice I've gone all the way over to the left. You could skip a line if you wanted after the last thing. I do that in case there's something to stick back in that I forgot. If you liked what you saw with Much Ado About Nothing uh, and Shakespeare in Love, well, here's what I would recommend. There's a certain order. Sh uh, you know, this is if you think, whoa, wait a minute, Shakespeare's cool. It can be a lifelong uh, love for you. It has been for me. Anyway, here's what I would. Here's the order I'd recommend. Much Ado About Nothing. We already did that. Uh, R and J, Rom Romeo and Juliet. Yes, I would say do that second. It's a tragedy, and I already told you the story. If you do that, go with Zeffirelli's. Uh, he directed it in the 1960s, 63 or something like that. That's the best. I think unquestioned. That is the best. He's an Italian director. Leonardo DiCaprio uh, starred in one that was set in Miami, and that's okay if if this one didn't exist. My daughter, Erica, when she was in first grade, on her own, I happen to have this, she sat and watched all of Romeo and Juliet and claimed she understood it. In any case, she, she watched the whole thing. It is very, very good. The costumes are out of this world. Now, I could go on and on about it. Well, if you've watched Romeo and Juliet, then I would say go to West Side Story. This is one of the many adaptations of Romeo and Juliet. It is a Broadway musical. It is terribly sad, as Romeo and Juliet is, so I'll do that next. The Taming of the Shrew. Now, this was also done by Zeffirelli and also done in the 60s. I think it's wonderful. Now, there are some women have some issues with this. Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, a woman is tamed by a seeming, at, some, at times seemingly brutal man. But anyway, it, it worked in Shakespeare's day and it still works for me. It, once again, with Zeffirelli, he spent a fortune on the costumes. Uh, I don't think I would have to coach you uh, through these if you uh, went to them with the right attitude. If you've seen ten, uh, Taming the Shrew, then you should see Ten Things I Hate About You, which you, you should maybe see anyway. This is a teen movie. It's an adaptation of it. Uh, Patrick Verona, instead of Petruchio from Verona, Patrick Verona comes to a high school, uh, played by, uh, oh, what is his name? I tragically died so young. Uh, at, the, at the moment, I just can't think of his name. I'll think of it maybe before the video is over. It is a wonderful teen movie, and something I want to tell you about that, there's all kinds of stuff that's planted in it that's so clever, but one you might not get. At one point, the father is doing an exercise thing, and it slips, and it goes flying out, out, and you hear a crash. It hits the neighbor's window. Well, a little later in the scene, the thing comes flying back, and he shouts out, Thanks, Bill. That's the only thing you ever hear about Bill. Now, why would a movie like that have that written in there? Thanks, Bill. Well, he's thanking Bill Shakespeare. William Shakespeare. Uh, they thanked him for the plot. Uh, that's one of, of many uh, very clever things that have been put in there. A Midsummer Night's Dream has been done many times. Wonderfully, a perfectly wonderful play. The poetry in it is great. Kevin Klein, that's the one that you want to see. There are other big stars in it. That was done maybe 10 years ago. Very, very good. Very satisfying. I think you would do better if I coached you through that. And you might want to wait on that until partway through the year because I may decide to coach you through a Midsummer Night's Dream. But even if I don't, if you have the right attitude, give it about mm, 10 minutes and I think you'll be uh, absorbed into it. Uh, As You Like It has recently been done by Kenneth Branagh. Uh, he does not star in it. The only time you hear him is his voice uh, right at the end. I think he says, and cut. It's his directing. It's kind of different, but it's good. I've used it before in class. I think coaching you uh, with both of these might help. Uh, that's as you like it. Macbeth. Well, there's various versions of Macbeth. I think, honestly, the best one I ever saw was done by Playboy. Um, you know, I don't know what the heck they were doing doing a movie like that, but I, I thought it was the best. But there's other good ones. I can't single one out. Uh, the play itself is great, uh, often taught to high school seniors. Uh, Hamlet, Mel Gibson's Hamlet, that's the one I'd recommend you go with. I think it's good, it, it's short, I think it's a little easier. Branna, Kenneth Branna, he did a Hamlet that's probably better. It's complete. Uh, see them both. Uh, they're both very good. Um, Alright, uh, Branna's Love's Labor's Lost. 
Uh, I would go to the, uh, a lot of uh, people didn't like it much. It sort of flopped, you might say, I think. I didn't like it at first. I mean, he took a lot of liberty. He did it as, a, say, a 1930s music musical, where, where, where or, yeah, uh, I mean, a, a film movie musical. Burst into song every so heaven, I'm in heaven, and I mean uh, songs out of the 1930s. But when I watched it the second time, I said I liked it, dancing and stuff. I liked it. I loved Slaver's Lost. The Shakespearean troupe did it one time and did it pretty well. Merchant of Venice. There's a fairly recent Merchant of Venice. It's good. I think there's one or two other good versions of Merchant of Venice. It's uh, the problem with Merchant of Venice is it could be considered to be anti-Semitic. Uh, the bad guy is a Jew named Shylock, and uh, if it's played wrong and you get feeling too sorry for Shylock, it becomes a tragedy. That's a bit of an awkward play. We did it one time, the Shakespearean troupe did. We did it. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, that's a hard one to do, but uh, boy, some of the speeches. Uh, the, the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the heaven rain from heaven upon the earth beneath. There is the great, great speech where uh, Portia argues that you must have mercy. Uh, it, it's a good play. Richard III, it was done in uh, fairly recently, again not with music in it, done in a strange way. Ian, I want to say Holmes, he, he starred in it, I'm not sure, but that's the one, if you see Richard III, that's the one I would go with. I think you would maybe like it. This is, again, this is if you are decided you're into Shakespeare. Twelfth Night uh, with Bonham Carter. Um, it's okay. It, I, don't, I don't think it was great. But if you see it, or even if you don't see it, then you can see the teen movie, She's the Man. And then finally, Julius Caesar. Now we're going all the way back in the 1950s with this. Uh, Mar Marlon Brando, I think I've got his name right. Uh, he did the part of... Uh, of uh, oh, the one guy that was true to, to Shakespeare, or I mean to uh, to Julius Caesar. Why can't I think of it? Mar uh, Mark Antony, uh, his fr his speech: "Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I've come to bury Shakespeare." And on he goes. He does a he's a young man there. He does a powerful job with that. Uh, black and white. I recommend it. Oh, Julius Caesar for me always though. After the third act, when Julius Caesar's actually dead, it's not as good for me, uh, the play. But others say, well, Julius Caesar isn't the main character, really Brutus is the main character. Well, I can't teach you all this, but here's a certain order, and this is if you want to run with it, and you've just decided, I like Shakespeare, and you want to go for it, there you go. I probably left something out, but I've been in a hurry. Hope to see you tomorrow.